On the first part of this video I talked about the story of Koenig, how everything started and about the, all the crazy Ferraris that they built. But Koenig was also specialized on other cars, which was another thing that set them apart from the others. Also, differently from the others, Koenig also built racing cars as a way to promote their business and to show their true power. So hello guys and welcome back to another video and here are the crazy creation of Koenig specials. BMWs weren't the first choice for most of the tuners. Beside Alpina, Gambala, Hertig, AC Schnitzer and Koenig and some other lesser known tuners. And all these tuners had their own style and the best car to prove this is the A24 6 series, which in my opinion is one of the most beautiful BMWs of all time and my favorite 6 series. Anyway, back to the talking point. The Alpine i24, no matter which one, the B7 Turbo Coupe, B9 3.5 or the B11 3.5, all looked awesome and all were quite powerful. Gambala's a24 was a very interesting car that captured the spirit of the tuners of the 80s. The Koenig a24 was terrible in my opinion. Not much is known about this car. No specs, no numbers, nothing. But the body kit of this car is just terrible, looks, looks like it was designed with only a ruler. There exist some A24s that look like they were built by Koenig because of the Testarossa stripes. But those cars were actually built by another tuner called Kago Motorsport. Koenig also built two other BMWs, but I couldn't find much information about these cars either. A 832 7 series and the A30 3 series. Both cars look like they just had, a, had received a wider body and they don't look bad at all, especially the A32 with those ultra wide fenders. Like unmentioned on the first part of this video, Koenig was one of those tuners that made it into the 90s and one of their best 90s cars was the Koenig KS8 based on the magnificent 8 series A31. The KS8 was modified top to bottom. Koenig offered two options, an 850i KS8 and an 850CSI KS8, both supercharged. The 850 had 450 horsepower and the 850CSI had 510 horsepower, which helped the car to reach 310 km per hour. The KS8 came with a wider with a wider body kit with a typical useless side air vents and some came with a rear spoiler. Koenig also built some convertible KS8s, but these models are very rare. Willy built a racing M1 and an A21 320i Turbo in the mid 80s, but not much is known about these cars. Like BMW, Jaguar also wasn't a popular car, but since Jaguars offer luxury and power in one package, some tuners would work with them and Koenig was one of them. Sadly, like with the BMWs, not much information exists about these cars. Then they look like they just received some cosmetic changes, even though according to this brochure, some of them had 5.7 liter engines, which means that they probably had bored out engines, and some XJS were supercharged. Koenig offered an XJ and an XJS, both with similar specs.
like all the other tuners, Koenig built a crazy and a ridiculous Mercedes. One of the first Koenig Mercedes was the SL R107 white body. For whatever reason, the R107 wasn't a popular car among tuners. Some tuners would convert C126s into convertibles instead of tuning R107s. Only tuners like Brabus and AMG that were specialized on Mercedes would tune R107s. But no one, beside ultra limousines, came near Koenig. Like the name suggests, the car had an ultra wide body, with a new front and rear bumper, a crazy rear wing and a set of white BBS wheels. Since it was a Mercedes, the interior was left untouched. Beside the popular Recaro seats, the white body also came with a TV and a Clarion G80 system. The 5 liter V8 now was supercharged and produced 320 horsepower. And of course, Koenig built their 1000 SALs. But differently from the others, they made the 1000 SALs faster, instead of making them more luxurious, even though most of them had new interiors. The W126 was available in two options. Both models had 400 horsepower, thanks to the turbos, which helped the car to reach 100 in 6.6 seconds. The difference between the cars was the body. The first model came with Tessarossa stripes, when the second version came with a much simpler body kit. Most of this car came with Recaro seats, TV and new stereo systems, but nothing crazy like ABC exclusive, Trasco and Gembala. But the most popular Koenig Mercedes was the C126. Like the SAL, the SAC came with two body kits. Also, the power output was the same. Like I mentioned before, some tuners would uh, turn hardtop C126s to convertibles, and Koenig also had their version. But according to this Koenig brochure, this car didn't have the power increase. But probably if you had enough money, they probably would have done something for you. Another very interesting Koenig car is the version of the W124. Differently from the other tuners like AMG and Brabus, which were putting some of the biggest engine available into the, into the 124, Koenig just turbocharged the 3 liter version, both the sedan and the coupe. This increased the power to 300 horsepower, which was enough to reach 270 km per hour and to reach 100 in 6.2 seconds. The 140 came with different body kits, but this time the side stripes were way less popular. Since we are talking about the E-Class, Koenig also tuned some W210s, but I think that they just made some exhaust system for this car. In the 90s, Koenig touched again a car that most of the tuners didn't, the C140. Differently from the 140, which was super popular and everyone was trying to build the fastest version, the C140 for some reason was, wasn't that popular. The body kit was the same for most of the cars. New bumpers, new fenders and the F40 style rear spoiler. But some came with this terrible covered head and headlights and taillights. Most of the cars came with, uh, with a stock 5 or 6 liter engine, but some came with a 7.2 liter with 580 horsepower engine, which was the response of Koenig to the 7.3s of AMG and Brabus and to the 7.4 of Carlson. Koenig also built some W140s, but they are very hard to come by. Besides the 140, the 7.2 liter engine was also used for the Koenig R129, which in my opinion is one of the best Koenig specials ever. The R129 received a much wider body kit, which suits this car perfectly. The last Koenig Mercedes was probably the worst one. The Koenig 3.6-280 had one of the worst body kits. The body kit of this car just looked cheap and looked like it was made by some tuner with zero experience. Willy also tuned some Lamborghinis in the 80s and 90s. His first tuned Lambo was a turbocharged Countach. Thanks to the turbo, the Koenig Countach now had 500 horsepower. Also, the car was fitted with new side skirts, rims and new interior. But apparently this wasn't enough for Willy. 
so he built a twin turbo Kuntaj with 700 horsepowers. But probably the car might have been very expensive, so nobody bought one. Koenig continued with the twin turbo Lamborghinis into the 90s with a Diablo, which now had 800 horsepowers. Besides the additional power, the Koenig Diablo received a new body kit similar with the body kit of the SA30. But the craziest Diablo would come in the mid 90s. In 1992, Lamborghini presented the Diablo VT Roadster concept, which was the first Diablo Roadster. But differently from the production version, which came years later, this concept was a true old school speedster. Lamborghini got tons of requests to build this car. But Lamborghini said no. But two customers weren't happy with the response. So they asked Koenig to build the car for them. And Koenig built a perfect replica of the car. In total, Koenig built only two roadsters. And one of them went to Japan. This Diablo is interesting because it was also twin turbocharged and had 600 horsepowers. But only Koenigs that were as crazy as the Ferraris were the Porsches. Like the Mercedes and the Porsches were very popular among tuners and everyone was trying to build the fastest one. Koenig had a wide range of models and the most known one was the 911 Turbo Roadrunner. The body kit of this car was one of the wildest one. Besides the ultra wide body kit, the Roadrunner also had 928 headlights and Audi 200 taillights. But if the white body kits weren't your thing and you didn't want to look like a drug dealer, you could get the Roadrunner with a much refined body kit. The engine displacement was enlarged from 3.3 to 3.4 liters and the turbo was replaced with a bigger one. The power ranged from 480 horsepower to 550 horsepower. Thanks to this additional power, the Roadrunner could accelerate from 0 to 100 in 4.4 seconds and had a top speed of 308 km per hour. The Roadrunner was also offered as convertible. Koenig also offered a 911 Carrera. The Roadrunner, the Carrera had received a wild body kit. But differently from the Roadrunner, the Carrera was supercharged instead of being turbocharged. Now the power output was at 350 horsepower and had a top speed of 285 km per hour and could reach 100 in 4.9 seconds. Koenig also offered a 928 Special, which also was supercharged and had 380 horsepower. And of course the 928 came with a wild body kit, including here the useless air vents. And like the Roadrunner, the 928 was offered as convertible. But definitely the most known Porsche Koenig specials is the Koenig C62, the road going version of the Lomo winning Porsche 1962. Many tuners build a road going version of the 962. The first one was Koenig with their C62. After they came DP Motorsport with the DP 1962, the most known one Dower with the 1962 Lomo, and the craziest one Schuppmann with the 962 CR. Koenig replaced the 3 liter boxer engine with a 3.3 liter, and thanks to this, the C62 ended up with 800 horsepower. But the Dower was faster compared to Koenig, which had a top speed of 370 km per hour, when the 1962 Le Mans had a top speed of 405 km per hour. Also, Dower could reach 100 in 
two, in 2.6 seconds. Another C62 needed 3.3 seconds. Another thing that Dower was superior to Koenig was the interior, since Salomo had a more luxurious interior, with leather and, and the proper dashboard, when the 1962 interior was completely stripped down and looked more like the interior of the racing 962. The asking price for the C62 was $1 million, which was the same price that DP, Dower and Schupan had. In the late 80s and early 90s, Willie also built some racing Porsches, like the 1962 and the 935 K3. Like I mentioned on my first video, the Koenigs aren't that f hard to find, at least the Mercedes and the Porsches. The Jags, BMWs and Lamborghinis might need some time. Also, like the Ferraris, the best places to search for a used Koenig are Germany, Netherlands, UK and especially Japan. The price for a used Koenig must most of the time is the same as a stock model of the car, besides the Mercedes, which have the same price as a AMG or Brabus counterpart. The C62s rarely pop up for sale, since they are extremely rare, but when they do, they tempt to sell for $1 million, like this C62 for example, which was up for sale one year ago in Japan for 1.5 million euros. Something that you should keep in mind is there are tons of fake Koenigs out there, so you should be aware of that. If you have any plans to buy a used Koenig, just ask them on their website, so they would verify the car for you. So guys, thank you for watching, see you next time.